بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now let's try to understand the difference between the VLAN and the VXLAN like we uh, like we have already known these things the VLANs and all we discussed in the previous videos as well so if you compare the VLAN and the VXLAN both are networking technologies both are relating to the networking uh, technologies but they both will be serving a different purpose and the way they work will be totally different and they work in a different layers of the network so let's try to compare them Now, starting with the VLANs concept, what we already know, it is a traditional way of separating the users. Like we have a VLAN 10, we assign the computers in the VLAN 10, and then the VLAN 20, accounts department, marketing department. And you don't want the accounts department, marketing department should communicate with each other, even though they are connecting within the same layer to network. So we want to isolate them. And in case if they want to communicate in the future, then we set up a layer three device, and then we do inter VLAN routing. And that's that's the way it, it works. So it's a kind of a logical separation, but it is done at the layer two. So we can say it is done at the layer two. And uh, probably all the devices are connected within the same layer two network, uh, logically separated with the concept of the VLANs. Okay, so the purpose, as I said, the purpose is to improve the network performance, minimizing the broadcast, and also improvises the security and the management is all the advantages what we or the main purpose we can say. The number of VLANs it supports, uh, basically the VLAN uh, supports up to uh, something called 12-bit VLAN ID, which means to the power of 12, it supports up to 4,096 VLANs. So which means with a 12-bit identifier, we can have up to a maximum of 4,096 VLANs in the network. So which means as per the standards, we can have up to 4,000 VLANs, which can be available and probably that can work fine uh, but again in in a normal networks but again if you scale up the same thing with the data centers or any kind of large networks or the large data centers that number is not uh, scalable so probably in terms of scalability compared to the vxlan uh, there is a scalability limit as well now again one more thing the isolation the isolation is done at the layer two only which means this entire isolation is separated based on the layer two. Of course, there will be a dot one q trunks uh, will be used at the same at the back end, and we have a VLANs. Uh, those things, which means the entire uh, communication process or the isolation is done at the layer two only, not at the layer three. Which means there is no layer three device in between, uh, unless you want to communicate between one VLAN to another VLAN. But within the VLAN. The entire communication process is done at the layer two links. Like we have a trunk links, we have the STP links, which will decide which path will be forwarding. We have the trunk links, which will carry the multiple VLAN traffic. So probably which is more kind of a complete layer two network, uh, which do not support again, a large scale, a dynamic uh, VM migration. So if you are looking out in the data centers, and if you're looking out for some kind of uh, VMware or VM virtualizations, or some kind of virtualized mi uh, migration options, the VLANs are not uh, scalable or not uh, flexible. And that's where the concept of the VXLAN comes into picture. So now let's try to uh, correlate the same thing with the VXLAN here. Now the VXLAN is going to overcome majority of the disadvantages what we have in the VLAN. So the first thing is the layer of operation. Uh, like, like we discussed, the VLAN works at the layer two, but whereas the VXLAN works at the layer three uh, network layer of the OSI model. So which means it's going to use uh, the same, you know, there will be a layer three links and there will be an OSPF protocol, which is responsible or connected. And then learning the information, how to reach to the specific switch based on the layer three. So the complete, the virtual, network will be built on the top of the uh, layer three or the existing IP network. So the end-to-end -end reachability between one switch to another switch can be based on the layer three. You may have a layer three network. And even between the switch to switch also, we have a layer three network. So the main uh, reason of introducing the VXLAN is to extend the capability of the VLAN because the VLAN concept was only working at the layer two. Now you want the VLANs uh, to be whatever the VLANs, like you have an accounts department sitting in the head office and you have an accounts user sitting in the, the branch office. 
there must be a communication. But again, this has to be done over the layer three network. So you want to scale the same concept of the VLANs uh, probably over the layer three network. So which means to do that, uh, we we just use we 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 are we are trying to use the VXLAN concept here. Okay, so the VXLAN concept is going to extend your layer two network. The same layer two communication, these two can talk to each other over the layer three uh, network. Uh, especially if you compare this in the head office, branch office, or data center to data center, or if you have a, a multiple data centers in your company network, you might be communicating between the data center networks or in the cloud environments where the virtual machines and the containers, they need to communicate with each other on the same network segment. And coming to the number of uh, VLANs or the number of uh, virtual LANs you can support, it's going to be a 24-bit 24-bit VNI address. Uh, VNI stands for Virtual Network Identifier, which is going to allow uh, 2 to the power of 24 a uh, number of virtual segments, which is around 16 million. So in terms of scalability, you can have up to 16 million VXLAN segments, uh, which means you can have up to, up to 16 million compared to the 4K what we have in the VLANs concept. Uh, like I said, the isolation part, uh, isolation, as I said, the isolation is done over the layer three network as well. Now, one of the key differentiator, like if we just summarize the key differentiator between the VLAN and the VXLAN here is, now the VLAN is typically works at the layer two network. Now, what you want to do is you want to extend this over the layer three. And that's where your VXLAN was introduced, which is going to provide you much uh, flexible and a scalable solution to span your layer two networks over the layer three networks, especially in the virtualized and the cloud environments. Okay. Uh, again, uh, VLANs, and then you will have the similar concept of the VLANs, like segmenting the physical networks into multiple uh, different networks. Uh, but but mostly we do the segmentation of the networks or creating the VLANs within the physical infrastructure. But whereas the VXLAN is more done at the virtual infrastructure, I means we can say like VXLAN is used in the virtual network overlays, uh, which is going to span over the layer three networks, not just restricted to the layer two. Again, uh, as I said, the VLAN, VXLAN is mainly beneficial in the data centers and in the cloud environments or any kind of uh, new new designs where there's a rapid uh, deployment and the isolation of the virtual networks are required.